Almost an hour into the third level, we pick up pocket tens under the gun. With blinds of 50,000, 75,000, I raise to 150,000. Pat Lyons is a new arrival at the table. If you don't know who Pat Lyons is, he's more than happy to tell you and everyone within earshot that he's the world famous Pat Lyons. Here's his Twitter profile. To his credit, he's probably the absolute most famous person that I've ever met with less than 1,941 Twitter followers. Perhaps regionally famous Pat Lyons is a more appropriate title, with that region being just in his head. But he has won a bracelet event and also a WPT main event. He's another wild opponent and he three bets to 550,000 for middle position. This is the second time he's done this in the last few minutes. I'm beginning to suspect that he doesn't always have it. Pat's stack is about 40 big blinds. We've got him covered. I'm tempted to rip it since there are only four better pocket pairs than ours. If we don't hit a set, we won't like most flops. Despite us possibly having the best hand if we're up against ace-king, ace-queen, or more bluff type combos, I flat to preserve our stack in case we're behind and see a flop. The dealer puts out 9-3 deuce with two clubs, there are no overcards out there, and it's unlikely that we're up against a set of nines. This is one of the best flops that we could have gotten without improving. I check to see how Pat wants to play this. The boisterous opponent puts out a big bet of 800,000, leaving himself with only 1,750,000 behind. This is a brutal spot for us. If we call, we may not want to see any clubs on the turn. Despite having the 10 of clubs, we certainly won't want to see any ace, king, queen, or jack either. That's a lot of cards that we'd have to fade. A call would put the pot at 2.9 million, and Pat would have barely more than half a pot size bet remaining in his stack. It seems like we have to either fold an overpair on the flop to an eccentric dude for a bet of two thirds pot, or get it in right now for 2.5 million effective. I'm handcuffed, and I hate both options. Ultimately, I rip it, for 2,550,000 effective, we've got the opponent covered if he calls, so even if we lose, we'll have 11 big blinds. Pat snap calls and couldn't be happier to show pocket kings. The locally, sometimes recognized opponent has me absolutely crushed. To make things worse, he's got the king of clubs, so we don't have the backdoor flush to fall back on. This is just another cooler situation. We've had two go our way so far. It was just a matter of time before one went the other way. The turn is the jack of clubs. We pick up the flush draw, but it makes no difference since Pat has a better one. We're down to two possible outs and a pot for over six million in chips. We'll either be one of the chip leaders with 70 remaining, or we'll be left with scraps. Sometimes, it's just your tournament. Wow! Holy Fucking shit. Fucking ass, damn it, man. Fucking damn it. Fuck. Fucking damn it. I haven't covered. I'm not sure there's much we could have done differently in that spot. We both had over pairs, so it pretty much played itself, but we get as lucky as possible to put a world famous beat on the opponent for a pot worth over $600,000 in buy-in money to knock out our first victim of the day. We're running as hot as possible in every important hand. I'm not a particularly religious or spiritual person, but it's hard not to feel like I'm getting some help from my dad in a few of these spots. From time to time throughout the tournament, I'll think about him and wish that he could have stuck around a little longer to see runs like these. Getting lucky isn't exactly how I want to win, but I've been on the losing end of plenty of these in important spots in other tournaments. Now that I'm on the right side, I'm going to do my best to make the most of it. Just 13 left, we get switched to the other table, and the very first hand, we look down at ace-king offsuit in the big block. The player under the gun, Travis Egbert, who's from the town right next to where I'm originally from in Northern California, min raises to 80,000. The cutoff calls, he's the chip leader, but both players have me covered. I've got just over 30 big blinds. I'm certainly going to three bet, but should I jam? Should I make it a smaller amount? I certainly don't want to accidentally run into aces or kings and have my run ruined right before we make the final table and huge pay jumps. I go with a three bet to 400,000. It's a fairly large size and it should get lots of respect. There's no reason to risk that big of a portion of my stack as a bluff at this stage of the tournament against two monster stacks that have me covered. The initial preflop raiser asked me how much I've got left. Given the total, he still has an even larger stack behind that covers him, yet the under the gun player four bet jams in my face. There aren't many situations more uncomfortable than this. There's no way he should ever be making this play as a bluff. I wish that I chose any other decision other than three betting to 400,000. The cutoff folds immediately. I don't see how I can possibly fold after putting almost a third of my chips in already. I make the call hoping that I'm up against ace, king, or queens, or jacks at least but I strongly suspect that it could be pocket aces or pocket kings. 
The opponent reveals that he has Ace-King offsuit as well. I'm somewhat relieved, especially because he has the King of Hearts, while we have the Ace of Hearts, so we can hit either four diamonds or four hearts to get the win, but he can only hit four clubs to win. Before the cards are out, I start thinking about all the beats I've taken lately in incredibly important situations when my opponents have had Ace-King. I busted Queens to Ace-King on my first bull at this event when the opponent drilled the straight on the turn. I lost with Pocket Kings against Ace-King on day five of the WPT World Championship in December when a win would have put me in line to get a huge seven-figure score, but instead I lost and ended up with a $99,000 payout. Just a few months before that, I busted out of the five diamond pocket aces. We got it all in preflop and the opponent turned trip kings to end my run on day three after we'd made the money. Shortly before that, I lost ace king offsuit to ace king offsuit on day three of the Tampa main event for piles of chips when the opponent made a flush. It's certainly been my nemesis and even a few days prior, while I was in my hotel room playing on WPT Global, I got into a massive pile with pocket kings versus ace king that's worth the equivalent of about $4,500 and the opponent spiked the river. By the way, if you're in an area where you can play WPT Global, be sure to sign up using bonus code BRAD in order to receive a deposit match of up to $1,200 and some other perks. I have more information in the description box, but these are the softest online games I've ever played, and there will be some big opportunities for giveaways coming up if you use that bonus code. Back to our current hand, surely I won't get my face melted when it's Ace-King versus Ace-King here, right? I'm not so confident. Then the flop comes 6-4-3, all diamonds. It's us who's free rolling for perhaps the biggest part of the tournament so far. I'm on the edge of my seat, hoping that Ace-King is finally gonna work out for me in a cooler situation. Winning this pot would propel us to the second largest stack in the tournament with very few people left. I wanna win badly. Is diamonds, one. All diamonds. One time, one time. Yes! Holy sh Holy sh Wow. The turn is the Jack of Diamonds, giving us the ace high flush and sealing the win for us in a pot of over two and a half million in chips. We've got almost 70 big blinds and we're just a few knockouts away from making the final table. Usually I remain silent during all ins, but I couldn't contain my excitement and I let out a big yes because I was so thrilled to win it. This is an absolute dream run. I need to pull it together as we pick up pocket queens in the small blind the very next hand. This is the third interesting hand that I've played back to back to back, and it's the first premium pocket pair that I've gotten. The player in middle position raises to 150. My stack has been completely depleted. It was once a proud five figure stack of high society, but now it's been reduced to 3635. I three bet to 500, hoping that it'll look like I'm at the end of my rope after the previous two hands. Really, I'm close to the top of my range. The initial preflop raiser asks to see how much I'm playing. I was going to add on for another five to 10,000, but I didn't have time since this is the very next hand I was dealt. Part of me wishes that I had a bigger stack since we've got a huge starting hand, but part of me is okay only having about 3,600 because it might be the perfect amount to induce a four bet shove from my opponent, either as a bluff with ace four or ace five suited, or with a hand that he might jam for value that we're actually beating, like jacks or tens. Middle position player four bets to a smaller amount of 1,400, isn't going to say that price for long. One. All in. All. Show. <laughs> All right. The opponent shows pocket aces. I've run really well at Grayton over the course of my life, but it looks like that could be coming to an end as I might potentially lose my third all in pot in three hands. When I said all right, that was me acknowledging it's clearly not my day and I'm gonna call it quits if I lose this. Going back to the end of the tournament, I've chopped one all in and lost four. I really don't wanna make it five. I don't have much hope though, especially as the flop comes out nine, five, three. Good thing I didn't rebuy. With two cards to come, two queens left in the deck and a backdoor spade draw, I've got about a one in eight chance of winning. It's looking bleak, but the door isn't closed shut on us yet. In fact, there may be just enough room for a little magic. Oh, wow. One run twice? Bad thing I didn't rebuy. One run twice? No thanks, I'm okay. How much you got? Uh, this is two. We drill a miracle two outer in a pot over $7,000 to get a full double up. I was feeling low and really ready to just head back to the hotel room stuck 10,000, but instead, some life gets pumped back into us. I'm still down 2,700, but I feel like I'm up 5K. 
Yeah, I absolutely got lucky, but I'm not gonna squander the opportunity to remain in the game. I'm reinvigorated and ready to build on the momentum. Sometimes you can feel it when things are just beginning to go your way, and that's certainly the feeling that I've got right now. We're a bit stuck when we pick up Pocket Nines under the gun plus one. Under the gun raises to 100. He's first to act and opening to a large amount, I just call. The small blind is the opponent who beat us with the ace high flush, he three bets to 600. The big blind cold calls, under the gun calls for 500 more. We're getting a great price with a hand that plays well multi-way, I also call for 500 more. We're going four ways to the flop in position. It comes jack nine, three rainbow. We've got middle set and a three bet pot with multiple opponents. It's a dream setup. The three better may not have much, he checks. That's disappointing because I was already envisioning him doubling us up. The big blind checks, then under the gun checks. They may all have air. They're not gonna see a free card though. I bet 1400 for value. The small blind is either passing a kidney stone or really doesn't like facing a bet. He exposes pocket deuces and folds face up. I want the bat back but, oh, 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 Still players, still players. Oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Run quite the game today. The big blind folds as well. Under the gun is our last hope to make some additional money. He doesn't let us down. He calls with only 1970 behind. I'm surprised that he didn't shove with whatever he has. We're heads up. The turn is the eight of clubs, so the most obvious draw gets there to take the lead against us. And I think it's somewhat likely that the opponent could be holding queen 10, but there are a variety of other worse hands that he could still have. And the pot is so large, especially compared to the under the gun's remaining stack, that we won't let that concern us too much. The opponent checks. We don't want this board to get any worse for us or scarier for our opponent, making him feel less inclined to put more chips in the middle. There's only one move to make. That's to rip it. Pawn? All in. Call. All in and call. Queen 10? Yeah. Alright. Once, twice, or then? Just once. Uh, let's go once. Just 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 once. I mean, I do have a girlfriend with two children, but I had no idea that he knew that, and it seems like an odd time to discuss it. We get rewarded for running it one time, so we boat up to scoop a pot of over $9,000. We're no longer stuck. We're up several thousand on the day. It's time for a $30 PLO double board bomb pot. We're under the gun with aces and sixes. Plus, we've got hearts. It's a beautiful hand. The winner of this pot will pay time for everyone at the table. We're going seven ways to the flop. The first one is jack eight six with two hearts. We flop bottom set and have the nut flush draw. The second flop is king nine eight rainbow. We don't improve there. We just have our overpair. Small blind, big blind check. We're betting for value. We make it 100. That's evidently not an acceptable amount for the player on our left. He wants to make it more. The middle position player puts in the raise to 400. These PLO double board bomb pots can get big quickly. It folds back to us. We've got a strong hand on one board and a low to medium strength hand on the other. I call to see if we can improve, then maybe we can start piling money in. The top turn is the queen of diamonds. Jack 10 now makes it straight. The bottom turn is the three of clubs. It's most likely a blank, though you never really know in these hands. I check. The opponent has 1,500 total in the stack. He announces that he's making a pot size bet of 1,010. It's a pretty gross spot. I'm in terrible shape. If I'm up against something like King King 10 9, it's just super rare that I'll be up against the nuts on both boards. I'll often be good on at least one board. And worst case scenario, if I am up against the nuts on both boards, I'll at least have some outs to potentially scoop the entire pot. I could also be up against plenty of worse hands and be in great shape. I don't see how I can fold here. I'm also not going to call for 1,010 and fold to a $500 jam on the river. I announced that I'm all in for 1,500 effective. The opponent snap calls. This isn't good. I show what we've got. The player shows that he's got the nuts on one board with 10-9, followed by the nuts on the other board with a set of kings. This is about as bad as it gets. At least, we still have plenty of outs on the top board. We can hit hearts or the board can pair to give us a full house so that we can maybe win half the pot. We're drawing almost stone dead on the bottom board. It's a little bit hopeless, unless we can somehow drill an ace. Brace yourselves. Pair the board. That's good. It's like a super nutty it's very good. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, my God. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. You have a yeah, suit. Right? Jesus. Scoop. Yeah. I scooped. I have full house. You a miracle. <laughs> full house. And then. Oh, my God. That is insane. Wow. Thanks, man. That is the most insane. No, no is insane. That was the worst two errors of all time. I mean, he's drawn to two outs here. He's drawn to two outs on both boards. 
Oh, he has a red carry. Oh. Island covered, yeah. That's close to the luckiest that I've ever been in a big pot like that. We get the board to pair on the top board, in addition to drilling the Miracle 2 outer on the bottom board to set over set the opponent and scoop an enormous pot. To be fair, he got pretty lucky to drill one of only seven outs on the top turn for the nuts there before we resucked out. I have to give the opponent credit though, he took the bad beat extremely well. His name is Tom, I noticed earlier that he's a vlogger and I talked to him a little bit about that. Perhaps him losing this pot in such a rough way will benefit him in the long run. Be sure to check out his poker channel which is called I'm Life Still Poker. Very fitting. I'll have a link down below in the description box to his vlog. I've never won a hand like that before but I'll definitely take it. The straddle to 800 is on, Dylan picks up King Queen offsuit on the button. He's a high stakes pro from Las Vegas who I've actually played with a handful of times and included in multiple vlogs. He's very talented and has an extremely bright future in poker. He's only in his early 20s right now. Dylan raises to 2500. We've got ace jack offsuit in the small blind. You're never really supposed to be flatting from the small blind when the straddle's on. You're supposed to be three betting or folding. If you call, it allows the players behind you to have a really good price and you generally don't want to be playing from out of position against multiple players. You also don't want to set it up for the players behind you to put on a squeeze play. Folding a hand even as good as ace jack offsuit is completely reasonable, even against the button open, but we see Doug accidentally fold out a turn, so I don't need to worry about him coming along behind us with a call or three bet. I just call, which is totally fine to do when the straddle isn't on and only one player is left to act behind you. We're heads up against the button, the flop comes queen 10 3 with two diamonds, we've got a gutter with one over. I check, Dylan likes the flop with top pair, he's not going to let us see a free one, the button bets 4800. I'm not in the mood to let go of our hand, we've got a decent amount going for us, ace high might even be best sometimes. I make the call to see if we can drill a miracle card, giving us the nuts. The dealer is a friend of mine named Kevin, what do friends do when times are tough? They come through in the clutch, giving you the exact card you need to win a massive pot. Clutch Kevin, that's what we call him. I can't tell you how happy I am to see the king of hearts. I check because this will typically be a better card for the preflop aggressor and it certainly is a card that improves Dylan's hand to top two pair. The button won't typically be putting us on ace jack offsuit after we just called the race preflop. He's not overly worried as he bets 10,800 for value. We've got just over 66,000 in front of us and need to figure out the best way to get as much in there as we can. A jam is reasonable, I might do that as a bluff in some instances but I don't want to scare the opponent off of a top pair type of hand or even some two pair combos. I go with a relatively small sizing at 25,000. There's still enough room for Dylan to come over the top and jam for 40,000 if he doesn't have much and wants to turn his hand into a bluff. I'd actually expect him to potentially jam straights, sets, and perhaps even king queen to get value before a scare card comes on the river that completes one of the draws that are present. The opponent takes his time to process the situation. Eventually, he calls for 15,000 more. This is a high intensity scenario. We're in a $66,000 pot. We've got 40,000 effective. I've never rooted so hard for a blank in my life. The river is the deuce of spades. We couldn't have gotten a more ideal run out. We've got 60% of a pot size bet left in our stack. There's only one play to make at this point. Like Eric Clapton on stage alongside Mick Jagger, we rip it with the stones. Now all we can do is wait. There's over $100,000 in the middle one more time. The pot is ginormous and Dylan is getting over two and a half to one on a call. As strong as his hand is, there aren't really worse hands than King Queen that I'll be playing this way and jamming for value. So Dylan kind of only has a bluff catcher with his top two pair. A call here will nearly get me unstuck for the session, which I had little hope for before this. Dylan is deep in the tank. A minute goes by. Two minutes go by and the opponent still hasn't come to a decision. Three minutes have elapsed, still no decision. I'm not moving at all. Three and a half minutes go by, then Dylan finally makes the call. We turn over the nuts. It's a pot of 146,800 that's coming to us. It's by far the largest pot that I've ever won and the only one that I've ever won over 100,000. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe buttons yet, what are we waiting for? This one is a huge confidence booster that changes what seemed like an insurmountable deficit to overcome into one that's way more manageable. As glad as I am to take this down, I still know that I have work to do and I'm still slightly stuck, so I can't celebrate too much just yet. I add on for 1400 more, I get no mental breaks. Just two hands later, I pick up pocket jiggities on the button. I genuinely didn't love this hand several years ago, but since I started making jokes about it, I feel like I've run really well when I pick it up. 
Anyway, a player in middle position opens at 30, the high jiggity calls, I'm not going to flat, I 3 bet to 120. The initial preflop raiser puts in the 4 bet to 330, I could be crushed if he has aces, kings, or queens, I might be a slight favorite if he has a hand like ace-king. The hijack folds, I'm getting a decent price with huge implied odds, I'm not a big fan of playing another giant pot immediately after doubling someone up, I'm not folding though. I call, we're about to go heads up in a big 4 bet pot in position, this is where I need your help. If you'd like the dealer to put out a third jiggity, hit that like button on the count of three. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. The flop comes eight, seven, three with three diamonds. Damn it, it didn't work. The good news is that we still have an overpair and we have the jack high flush draw. We get even better news as the opponent checks. I don't think he'd do that with kings or queens with a diamond. Maybe he'd do it with ace king of diamonds or aces with the ace of diamonds as a trap. A lot of the time, he won't have any diamond in his hand and we'll be ahead by a wide margin, or at least we'll be in decent shape. I want to deny equity from ace-king hands, particularly ones containing one diamond, I bet 400. The opponent is thinking about what he wants to do. My sense is that he genuinely isn't sure what action to take. Ultimately, he slides in a stack of black chips that has me covered. I double check to make sure that I have the jack of diamonds. Another interesting thing about my situation is that I went slightly north when I added on for 1400. I started the hand with about 1565, which is slightly more than the $1,500 max. Technically, 65 of those chips shouldn't be in play. If I call and lose, I won't say anything and I'll give my entire stack to the opponent. If I call and win, I'll make sure that the opponent doesn't have to pay me extra. For the sake of the amount that I'm considering calling, we'll assume that I'd be drawing near dead because that's how I tend to do things and it'll be 835 for me to continue on. I'm not at all in the folding mood. I might lose $3,000 in a stretch of three hands, Buckle your seats, I'm calling. All right. I have no idea what the situation is. This could just be a quick session in which I get torched. The turn is the seven of spades, shouldn't change anything. The river is the jack of clubs. We backdoor a full house and have the second nuts in a huge pot. You guys smashing the like button earlier obviously helped bring the run good, but it just took a little time to reach Bellagio. I'm almost 100% sure that we have the best hand, so I'm not gonna slow roll, although the opponent is supposed to show his cards first since I called his shove. The other players at the table are shocked to see what we have and the run out. Oh, the opponent voluntarily reveals that we got extremely, extremely lucky. Aces, Jesus. Wow. All right, it should just be 1500. I might have been a little bit more, but I shouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, it should be, should be 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. I make sure that the opponent doesn't pay me more than he has to. I'm in shock after losing a pretty brutal hand and then immediately getting about as lucky as possible against pocket aces with the ace of diamonds. I told you the jiggies have been good to me lately. It's quickly become my favorite hand. Things can change rapidly with a flip of a card in poker. We go from being stuck piles to actually having a small profit. It's not over either. By chopping that, we're having a great night with lots of energy, good people, a few drinks, and a couple of aces in middle position. Under the gun plus one opens at 25. Under the gun plus two calls. I three bet to 105. The initial preflop raiser has this look in his eye like he's not ready to let go of his hand. He four bets to 250. It's getting intense AF in here. Under the gun plus two folds. I have 750 in my stack. I could fly out to trap. Instead, I choose a more standard approach. On. You go all in. 750 ish. The opponent shows kings. I turn over my cards. This is definitely a cooler situation. I just want a clean run out. Nope. The first card we see is a king right in the window. It's absolutely brutal. I run the worst. Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Just kidding. We set over set the opponent. That's actually brutal for him, but I'm rooting for pocket kings to win. If another king comes with the jackpot for 3,500. We don't hit the jackpot. We do come out of it winning a pot of over 1,500. 2020 is off to an exciting start. I made a lot of big hands this session, mostly won with them. I feel fortunate as stacks are brought towards me. I have to mention at this point that the opponent takes the speed about as well as I've ever seen. He's all smiles after, saying it was just a cooler, and he couldn't have lost to a better guy. His name's David, that's him in the nine seat. If you ever see him playing, then maybe say hello and perhaps buy him a beer. He deserves it. 